what if life didn't have to be so hard after divorce? Like, what if you could look forward to the future? Because regardless of whether it was you or your wife who initiated the divorce, I imagine the future is probably looking pretty bleak right now. I imagine you can relate to a lot of my clients who, when they start working with me, they tell me the future is dark and bleak and sad, and it's painful to remember the good times from earlier in their lives because it just seems impossible that they'll ever create amazing new memories like that again. And then you're you're told that you need to look ahead, right? That you need to look on the bright side and create a better future. So you try, but it's overwhelming. I mean, it's so hard to imagine, especially if you want a real relationship again in the future after a divorce. They like trying to even imagine how you would go about finding that, creating that, building it. Like for one, where do you even meet people these days, right? Like how long has it been since you were dating? And then once you do, assuming you do meet this amazing person, like how do you make that relationship work Like when you don't even know what really failed in this marriage? Of course, life after divorce seems hard. But here's the thing. Life after divorce doesn't have to be hard. In fact, it can be amazing. There's really two broad options for men after divorce. There's the first man who struggles, right? He's stuck. He can't stop thinking about the divorce. Maybe he's still in love with his ex, but she doesn't want to talk to him. He's got a lot, a lot of anger that he cannot figure out how to let go of and move through. And because of the anger and because of the sadness and the loneliness, he can't get back to himself. He can't get back to the person that he was before the divorce. And then the second kind of man is thriving after divorce. He's happy. He's relaxed. He's confident. He has an easygoing relationship with his ex. They actually can communicate about kids and money and assets and everything. And, and he actually can date, right? He goes out and he can meet other people and he seems to enjoy it and really make meaningful connections. And maybe he even does create a really incredible relationship that lasts. What is it that keeps so many men, I would say the vast majority of men in that struggling position well, a few, just a handful, are able to thrive after divorce. What is the difference? There's really just one thing that that man who thrives has that the struggling men don't have. Just one thing. The guy who bounces back, who is relaxed and happy and confident and able to build a new and better life for himself, he can do it because he knows how. He knows how to deal with the intense emotions that come up around his divorce. He knows how to get closure and move on. He knows how to figure out what went wrong in this relationship. And he knows how to build a better relationship in the future. He has a system. He has a roadmap. He has a plan. It's the only difference. The guys who stay stuck just don't have the information that they need to get to that place where they can thrive and create a better life. In this video, I am going to explain both the why and the how. I'm going to give you the two reasons why life after divorce seems so hard for you. And then I'm going to tell you the how in three things that you need to know in order to create a better life for yourself after divorce. And when I say a better life, I don't mean better than the hard life that you're envisioning or are currently living. I'm talking about better than your life was before your divorce, like the best life you've had so far. If you think that sounds crazy, Bear with me, I'm gonna show you exactly what you need in order to get there. So let's start with the why. There's two reasons why life looks so difficult after divorce. The first is emotional. You have a lot of emotions that you don't really fully understand or know how to deal with. And these really boil down, if you can dig in and be honest with yourself, to fear. Because if you wanna look forward to a better future, that future involves human connection. And if you've just gone through a divorce, you've had a lot of crappy experiences with human connection. So any underlying fears you have about being abandoned, being rejected, or ending up alone are probably super active and super heightened. So when you imagine looking forward, part of having a brighter, better future is envisioning some kind of real intimate human connection because we are social creatures and we are emotional creatures as humans and we do rely on each other for emotional support. So if your future is going to be bright and happy and bubbly, that means that there's going to be some kind of emotional connection with another human, whether it's romantic or not. But right now, whenever you think about that kind of connection, you get thrown right back into everything that happened in your divorce. So that's the first reason why life after divorce seems so hard. And the second reason is that it's just downright confusing. And if you don't understand what went wrong in this relationship and you don't really understand what it takes to build a successful relationship, even if you weren't triggered 
and had all these fears coming up around human connection, even if that wasn't an obstacle, you still wouldn't know how to go about doing it in a way that would be successful and work. That is the second reason why life after divorce seems so hard. Fortunately, we already know there's only one thing that you need to get past all of this, and that is to know how, to have the right information and know what to do. So the how takes shape in three forms. There are three things that you need to know, three hows that you need to have in order to move on, be that relaxed, happy, confident, capable guy who can have those meaningful connections and have that closure and relief. Okay, so the first thing you need is a system for making sense out of all the chaos. That system needs to help you make sense of the divorce, what went wrong, what role you played in it, and also make sense of your emotions so that they stop getting in your way. So we already talked about this a little bit, but there's like two main levels of emotion that block you from healing, moving on, and moving forward into a bright future. And the, the first level is like the apparent emotion, the emotion that you show and that you feel and are aware of. It's the anger, the frustration, the overwhelm, the regret, the anxiety, maybe maybe even some depression and detachment, those emotions block you because they stop you from making choices. They take away your ability to choose certain actions and certain paths to the future. When you're caught up in anger, you are not able to clearly see all of the options available to you. The same is true of anxiety, the same is true of depression. So that's the first level of emotion that holds you back. The second level of difficult emotion is like the underlying, what's underneath the anger, what's underneath the depression, the anxiety. Usually there's two primary emotions that are underlying after someone's gone through a divorce. And those emotions are fear and grief, right? That fear brings us back to like really deep underlying fears of being alone, of being abandoned, of being rejected, of being not enough, not wanted, not loved, right? Those are really primal survival level fears for humans. If you think back to you know, early human evolution, like we are so dependent on other people, especially when we're young, when we're infants, when we're children, for our very survival. So those fears of being rejected or being alone, those aren't just like woo woo or sissy or being a wuss or being weak. No, those are like primal survival fears, right? We need and have historically needed community as a human being. So those are very deeply ingrained innate fears. And they're often something kind of outside the level of our conscious awareness. We feel anger. Underneath that anger, if we dig in, is the fear of being left, the fear of being alone. And I bring up grief as a primal emotion too, because there's a lot of grief that is part of divorce. No matter who initiated it, whether it's your idea or not, you are letting go of something that was incredibly important to you for a long time. So under all those surface level emotions, there is grief and there's fear. So this system that you have for making sense needs to deal with both the surface level emotions and the primary emotions, and it needs to help you understand what actually happened, what went wrong, where things fell apart. The second how that you need is a how to have successful relationships. So I like to call this a roadmap for creating successful relationships. And any good roadmap for future success in relationships is going to have at least five things in it. It is going to involve you getting super clear on your criteria for choosing a right partner. And I say a right partner intentionally because there are so many possible partners for you. There's not just one there's not just two that you could be happy with. There are so many people that you could make a happy life with, but you always get to choose what you want that life to look like. So getting really clear on what is important to you in a relationship and what isn't, because again, we're all human, right? So we all have some flaws. You are not going to find like the absolute perfect person who never triggers you in any way, right? So you've got to get clear on your criteria for choosing a partner. This roadmap is also going to help you define the role of each partner in the relationship. This is something most of us are really vague on. We have like a vague sense of what we're supposed to do in a relationship and our partner has another one. And usually we have like really thorough, clear manuals of what the partner is supposed to do, right? Like we have a vague sense of my responsibility in the relationship and a really clear sense of her responsibility in the relationship. So we get clear, what are our roles? What does that look like? What does that really mean? You also need a step-by-step -step system for practicing real empathy. Empathy is like the emotional glue 
that holds a relationship together. And empathy is terribly misunderstood. We use it in all kinds of wrong ways. It's a, it's a long discussion topic. Um, I've got a couple of videos on my channel on empathy. So if that is a topic in particular you're interested in, please check those out. Um, the fourth thing that this roadmap is gonna have is a deep understanding of clear boundaries. It's really gonna define what boundaries are. Much like empathy, boundaries are terribly misused and misunderstood. Boundaries are not rules that your partner has to follow in the relationship. Otherwise, like you're gonna punish them or leave. Those aren't boundaries. Boundaries are having a clear awareness of the emotional distinction between you and your partner. Boundaries are the awareness of who creates your thoughts and feelings and who creates your partner's thoughts and feelings. Clear boundaries are taking ownership of your own emotional well being. So, the fifth thing you need is a plan that you set ahead of time so you know what to do when you get there of how you're going to deal with issues that come up in the relationship. Right? And I'm talking about the mundane, the daily life things, the parenting, the distribution of household chores, handling criticism from your partner, maybe what you're going to do if your sex drive changes or you become less physically attracted to them. Right? There are tools you can use for intentionally shaping and changing the way you think about your partner and that relationship, but you've got to plan those in advance. When you go into a relationship, you already know the areas that you tend to get triggered, the things that make you jealous or angry or frustrated in that relationship. You're aware of those, right? You've already been married. You know what gets you up and gets you going or gets you upset. So becoming aware of those cycles in yourself, identifying what triggers them and doing the work to start to disarm those old habits and intentionally replace them with new ones. If you do some of that work in advance or at least have a plan for doing that work when it comes up, it will completely change the way you react when those inevitable mundane challenges show up in a future relationship. And then the third how, the third thing that you need to really look forward to an amazing future and make life easy after divorce instead of hard is an intentional visualization practice. A lot of people want to just do this without doing the other two things that I talked about. That doesn't work, right? First, let's talk about what a visualization practice is, and then I'll explain why you need to have the system for making sense and the roadmap to a successful relationship before you do the visualization. So visualization is just fully imagining the future you want to have, right? It is seeing it, hearing it, smelling it, tasting it, thinking it, right? feeling it in your body. It's really living in your mind and an imagined experience what you want the future to be. And visualization is a very powerful tool to help you create the future you want. But this is also commonly a misunderstood principle. This doesn't work like that you just imagine yourself like happily married to an amazing partner with like three great kids and a big house and a nice car and you just get it. It's not wishful thinking. What it is, is intentionally training your brain to go after a certain result, but you still have to do the work to make that result real in your life. You have to be able to go out and make it happen. The visualization is what it's like your guiding light. It's like this beacon that makes it easier for you to take those actions because you are on a path to a clear destination. And the visualization is important, but it doesn't work alone. If you have that beautiful vision, but you don't have any system for making sense of your emotions or what happened in your relationship, and you don't have a roadmap to success in future human relationships, and future connections, you're gonna look at that beautiful visualization and have no ability to bring it into life in the real world. Okay, so this was a big high level view of what you need to do in order to make life after divorce better than life before divorce, right? Life after divorce does not have to be so hard. It can be incredible. It can be better than you can even imagine right now. If you are ready to go deeper, if you want to jive in and get the nitty gritty details of all of these systems and start putting them into play in your life so that you can be the happy, confident, relaxed man enjoying his future, then you and I might be a perfect fit to work together. Let's find out. You can book a free strategy session with me by clicking the link in the video description below. It will take you to my calendar where you can book a one-on-one -on -one 
private session with me where we will discuss your unique situation, the goals that you want to achieve, the future you want to create for yourself. And if I think I can help, I'll explain how my program works and what that would look like. And if you're not ready, that's okay too. But do go ahead and click subscribe and turn on notifications for the channel because every Tuesday and Saturday, I'm going to be putting out new videos to help you understand what's really going on with all of the thoughts and emotions and stress that you go through after divorce. And I'm going to give you tools for handling those emotions, tools for starting to create a better future for yourself. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you guys in a few days.